Hello everyone, my name is Araceli Garcia and I have been a high school English teacher for about 25 years. I recently left the classroom to serve as a district ELA TOSA for middle school and high school classrooms. Today we're going to be talking about writing strategies and how do we get our students, students motivated to write. Uh, as you might know, many students are struggling today, especially after going through distance learning and the pandemic. They might not feel motivated. They might not understand what's the point of getting this assignment done. So today I'm going to not only share with you the reasons why they might be feeling this way, but also give you a lot of strategies that can help you. Uh, if you click on the link under uh, the description, you will also find this Google slide presentation with lots of hyperlinks that will send you to some awesome and great resources. All right, let's jump in. So first of all, let's take a look at a little bit of the research. Now, I know that this is a bit dated, but it still applies to today. So this is from the Pew Research Center. Let's just kind of take a look here. It says teenagers' lives are filled with writing. Yes, they might not be writing that journal or those reading questions or that essay, but they are writing. In fact, 93% of teens say they write for their own pleasure. They're writing all of the time. Uh, some of them truly embrace, especially writing on their social media or maybe sending text messages. Um, again, it will shock you how fast they can write a quick note uh, or they can type up an entire response just with their cell phones. So let's take a look at what they are writing. What are kids writing today? As I mentioned, a lot of kids, many kids, have social media, especially at this age group, middle school through high school. Not only are they posting about their lives, they're also posting uh, polls, they're posting uh, images and memes and GIFs, lots of media that they're analyzing and interpreting. So yes, they are writing. Uh, what else are they writing? Oh yes, they're constantly texting. If I were up to them, they'd probably be texting all day long. And they're creative in their texts. So yes, even though we might not want that cell phone out, it might be distracting, what might be ways that we can leverage that skill that they have? Let's keep going. They vlog. They're out there creating media. They're promoting maybe uh, something that they do, such as their makeup or their cooking skills. Uh, are we giving them spaces to do these things? Some of our students are YouTubers. <laughs> they have told me, hey, Ms. Garcia, you know, follow me on Instagram. I have a YouTube channel. Some of them do do-it-yourself artwork. Again, they might do fashion. They might be doing uh, a nail art and makeup, right? So again, as teachers of literacy, are we providing spaces for them to continue growing in this interest and field? Finally, there's many websites out there that students can look to where they can publish their own work. So again, are we making these accessible to them? What else do we have? Not only are students writing in our, maybe in our English classes, but they're also writing across the curriculum, as they should be. It's part of the Common Core. So they're writing in their art classes. They need to be able to describe a piece of work that they are doing. They're writing in their science classes, expository works, explanatory works. Uh, they're writing in math. This is such a crucial piece. If our students do not know how to justify their answer, explain how they did the steps, they might not be able to pass those high stakes exams. What else? They're writing for real world uh, documents, such as writing college applications, writing resumes, asking for, uh, again, a job opportunity. And finally, they're also doing discussion boards. Many, many colleges have students doing discussion boards. If we're not doing that in our classrooms in middle school and high school, are we really preparing them for life after high school? And yes, we know that they are writing in their English classes. They're writing journals and summaries and argumentative essays, and they might be writing narratives and the famous five paragraph essay. But does it always have to look the same way? Does it always have to be the same product? Let's continue. So what is the challenge of today? Take a look at down here. It is a paradox. Even though our students are reading and writing a lot more, more than we ever did, we still have very low test scores. In fact, take a look here. This is from the 2017 CASP. 50.12% are either nearly met 
or below standard in their writing. Why is that? A lot of times is that students don't see the purpose of their writing product. They don't understand. They might be doing it for a grade. We might get those students who are always been good writers. They're the ones who are producing, but the kids who are either at or below level, they're just being mechanical or not doing the work at all. You might have classes or students where they might just be completely disengaged with the assignment. So what do we do? Do we keep forcing them to try to get that essay done? Do we intimidate or use fear, the fear of having them fail the class? And if you don't do this, you're not gonna pass the class, you're not gonna graduate. That's not really the most motivating method to use. Would you be motivated to do anything if people were threatening you, right? It's not a healthy way. And our students have realized that they need more. They need a stronger encouragement. So let's find out what are those ways. Now, in our district, we use something called Study Sync. And it's a great program, great curriculum, has a lot of variety of, of works that teachers can choose from. But again, it's a textbook. Back in the day when I first started teaching, uh, this is a long time ago, they just gave me a set of keys and a list of books that I could choose from. There was no binders, there was no textbook that had already made lessons. I had to come up with those. And any good teacher who does come up with those lessons, you need to be able to take something and make it fit to your students. And so if we're just looking at, for example here, the reading material and having them annotate and then having them do think questions uh, individually or maybe for homework, and maybe they're watching a little video, and, and then that's it. Again, it becomes very mundane for our students. They don't see what's the point, what's the purpose, what is this leading to? And that's not very real world uh, type of activities. So then what can you do? If you're finding your students are bored or, or you know, again, they're not turning in the work, maybe we need to change it up. So here's some ideas. What does motivate students? So let's take a look at this. It says teens are motivated to write by relevant topics, high expectations, and an interested audience, right? They wanna have an opportunity to share their ideas with others. Again, it says here, teens write for a variety of reasons as part of a school assignment, to get a good grade, to stay in touch with friends, to share their artistic creations, right? In our focus group, this is the research again, Teens said that they are motivated to write when they can select topics that are relevant to their lives and interests. Are we giving students some choices? I cannot get my students to write a huge, great, interesting essay on the U.S. Constitution when they don't have buy-in yet. I will eventually get them there, but first I gotta hook them in. It says, and uh, report greater enjoyment of school writing when they have an opportunity to write creatively. Having teachers or adults who challenge them, present them with interesting curricula, and give them detailed feedback also serves as a motivator for teens. Teens also are for writing for an audience, motivates them to write and write well. All right, so how do we provide this for our students? Here are some ideas that I have used, and again, I've worked in low income, uh, communities. I actually graduated from the high school where I taught at, and I had high expectations. All of my students, 100% of my students would turn in their assignments. Why? Because I would not accept zeros. I would not accept the student to take a nap in my class. I would not allow a student to say, I don't know how. I would dig, dig, dig. I would do all the things I needed to do to make sure the student got something done. Maybe not the entire essay, but they were going to produce some writing. But I always did it with love and gentleness. Let's find out. All right, so our kids like to interact. They like to be social. Maybe not with their peers. They like to be social with their friends. So we gotta create those spaces where they feel comfortable in the classroom. So I love using Kagan collaborative techniques. Um, and so here are some, and again, there's a link that I'm gonna provide for you on the Google Slides that you can get more research. But instead of having the students do those think questions on their own or for homework, why don't you turn it into a debate, a discussion? I love using this one called Round Robin, where they sit in, again, pre-selected teams. I am very intentional in my groupings, and they each have to discuss one question and figure out what's the best answer for that one question. So instead of having them do all five questions individually, I might have them discuss one question 
in depth and really come up with the sources and the site uh, text uh, cite their text to find out why are they choosing that answer. Again, you might have this one I really like Rally Coach, where it's just again then sitting in partners and one student's just asking the question, getting the other student to really think about the question, and then the partner writes. Then you switch over. So again, a different way of having students do these type of questions. Here's another one I love using this. I kind of use the musical chairs uh, strategy, and you can see here I put on some you know nice energetic music, and students have to we call this stand up, hand up, pair up. And so they're walking around. I'm, I'm telling you, I've done this with my ninth graders. I've done this with my seniors. If you have that classroom environment where it's safe to, to move around and you're not too anxious about some organized chaos, this is a great activity. Students walk around, they're hearing music. I tell them no shadows, right? Can't follow your friend around and no avoiders, right? You can't turn around and neglect someone. Wherever the music stops, whenever that music stops, they find whoever's standing close to them and they high five them or fist pump and then they have that discussion and i circulate right and then i might have them share out afterwards hey what did your partner say we need them to work on their listening skills their speaking skills which will contribute to their writing skills all right let's look at some more things if you're not a fan of padlet you definitely need to get onto padlet it is free for i believe you can have a few of these uh pages but some teachers just Keep erasing and making new ones so you don't have to worry about any cost. I love using Padlet and the kids do it too because again, now you have an audience. They know that other peers are going to be looking at their work and they step it up. So here's an idea and I'm actually going to go to this one. This is a literary playlist. Imagine if Holden Caulfield listened to music today. What would be on his playlist, right? Again, um, what would be on Lenny Small's playlist? This is a great critical thinking idea where students can use some media and really get creative. Let's take a look at what this teacher did. So if you go to Padlet, you can find a gallery of assignments where, where teachers have created this. And you can kind of see just how much you know they're writing. You could tell they really gave some thought into it. Um, and not only are they get to share their music, which is powerful for our students. So again, Lots of great things here. Uh, some teachers have used this as a place for students to write short book reports, or maybe you can even put those reading questions on there and students can comment on each other. You can still turn this into a speaking activity because they can then share out with the partner what they did. Let's keep going. What else? Flipgrid. Flipgrid is a great, great tool. Again, students can, I created here, these are all my different courses that I have. And so there's a place there. And again, here's a tutorial down below. And you can have students uh, get into a small group and I call it, you know, a table talk, uh, almost like, uh, you know, uh, one of those talk shows. And so there they have those think questions and I want them to ham it up. I tell them, I want you to really sound like you're in this, you know, interesting, fascinating uh, discussion, right? And so, uh, again gives them a chance to practice their thinking their speaking skills then you can have them write they have to get their ideas out first so they can feel confident about what they're writing what else do we have uh, oh here's another great tool and i know i'm sharing a lot of online tools but i always like to keep it fresh i don't like to do things over and over the same way and my kids they're quick at picking up they they teach me sometimes once i show them a a, a cool tool this is Adobe Creative Cloud. Again, it's free and kids create the most beautiful writing assignments. They really look like an online magazine. And so here, my students posted their online web pages on this Padlet that I had already created. My students had been reading The Crucible and so they took on research topics that had to do with social justice. So they took on topics such as misogyny and they took on topics such as racism in the justice system and the death penalty man did they get going they loved what they produced let's take a look at one of the uh, sites that my students produced give me one second let me show you here this is all of the web pages that and again i'm talking about i had english learners i had some students with special needs i had reluctant writers all of my students produced a web page take a look at this one so here's a student and she goes ahead and 
when you scroll up, it just scrolls up her writing and students can choose from a bank of images there. And it just, again, it flows like a beautiful blog that they can publish and share with others, which they did. My students were sharing their writings. They can embed videos. It is a powerful, powerful tool, again, to get them to write. All right, let's keep going. What else do we have? So students can also do all types of things. And I'm going to show you an article that was written that has even more. And that is uh, the New York Times. The New York Times has a section on uh, writing for students. And so I'm just going to point out a few. And again, I will have the link here. How to. Students can write about how to make a peanut butter jelly sandwich. How to. Right. So take a look at these topics. Easy, short, doesn't have to be long essays. Uh, I loved this little video. This video is a little snip of a movie and the voiceover, the student can do a voiceover or writing on analyzing a scene from a favorite movie. So yes, we want them to analyze, you know, again, a character in a novel, but first let's teach them the skill before they could get to analyzing Abigail in the Crucible, right? And I'm not going to show the video right now. You can watch the video. And then I came across this. I have always loved graphic novels, especially for my reluctant readers. And in StudySync, there are graphic novels for those teachers who want to look at some of those. I always like to show some samples first, and then I have my students write. So what if they did a children's book based on one of the novels that they're reading? So if they're reading, Again, uh, The Great Gatsby, can they find the essential scenes from a certain chapter and come up with some drawing? Now, they don't have to hand draw. Here's a great tutorial for something called Storybook. And it is basically, uh, they have some already made uh, avatars. and They're just plugging it away and you will see your students light up. And again, I've even had my students create a, a comic books or children's books just using Google Slides. They choose their pictures, sometimes they even draw their own, and then they write their text. So, so many possible ideas. Now, of course, eventually we want them to write a good, strong essay. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but first let's hook them in. They need to find their voice. They need to be acknowledged for the information that they know and, and the skills that they have, right? And then they will become stronger writers. I didn't become a stronger writer until I thought, what I had to say was important. And that didn't happen until I was in college. In high school, I just did it because I wanted a good grade. In college, I found my voice and it was a strong voice. And that's how my writing got better. And so I also have here some links to some writing formulas and strategies that will help your students once they get to that point. But I can't have them write that five paragraph essay on day one or week one, right? First, I have to hook them in, engage them, give them something relevant to their lives. I need to know my students. And then once I've created that safe space for them to share their voice, now I'm gonna teach them how to write a nice essay, how to cite their sources. All right, so I end here with this uh, some quotes here. And so uh, you could take a look at the same thing I'm, I'm sharing, that it's okay, most writers, as we all know, started with the struggle. They needed to get the voice out. So teachers, I ask, don't worry about the grammar. Don't worry about the spelling. Let their voices ring first. They can get to that afterwards, right? So put down that red pen and just let them write, right? All right, I hope that helped. Uh, again, I am a high school ELA TOSA for Hacienda La Puente. If you have any questions, you can always contact me and my information is down below. Have a great uh, week and rest of the year. Thank you.